Alright guys, so in today's video we're going to be disassembling and cleaning the Advanced Armament Core Element 2 suppressor. Uh, we're going to show the use of the Advanced Armament Disassembly Tools and we're going to be cleaning in this Central Machinery Harbor Freight Ultrasonic Cleaner using Purple Power and then we'll be treating the baffles of this suppressor with CL1 uh, CLP Plus Lubricant Protectant Cleaner which is what has been used in this suppressor in the past as a pre-treatment for these baffles. Um, we're just under 500 rounds through this since the last cleaning. Um, and again, it was pre-treated with the CL1 at that time and hopes that that would help. So uh, let's get started by disassembling this. So to take this thing apart, you start with the end cap removal tool. was in there pretty tight, but we did get it loose. All right, we've got the end cap off. See how dirty that is, if it will focus. All right guys, that's the end cap. You can see there's definitely some gunk in there. All right. Not going to be able to see down those baffles without a flashlight. Let's see if they fall out. They're not falling out on their own, so we're going to use the baffle pusher tool that's included. So to use this tool, you're going to take this piece here, and you're going to screw that into the um, AAC, of El AAC element 2. And then this brass piece is loose, it can fall out, so be careful. That's what's going to push your baffles as you screw this. And this piece back here. Okay, so let's get that in the AAC and push these baffles out. This is a slow process by hand. We'll see if we can do it completely by hand or if we may need to go get a wrench. It's definitely a little bit challenging to do. But I think as we break that lead and carbon up, there we go, things are starting to fall out. Interestingly enough, the uh, baffles are coming out, but they're coming out as one big piece. So, just from doing this, you can see how having a baffle stack that does not have any shielded baffles can be a little bit more challenging to take apart than a baffle stack that has clicked together shielded baffles. However, it is not something that should prevent you from buying the suppressor because with the included tool it's as easy as turning this it's just time consuming there we have the blast baffle so we've got all baffles out here's how it looks let's take this tool out Okay hey guys, so you can see some of the gunk that came out of there. You've got all the baffles. There's the blast baffle, there's a little brass pusher. Let's take a look at that blast baffle. It's a lot of gunk on it, but it's not really terrible for 500 rounds, and it wasn't too terrible to take apart. These are just falling apart. It's kind of nice, the click together stacks can sometimes be hard to disassemble. So we've got all the baffles removed. All right. And I do recommend that you wear gloves for this because this is all lead and carbon dust, uh, which definitely can't be good for you. 
So I do want to say what kind of ammunition we've been using. This is uh, a Gila Standard Velocity as well as Remington Thunderbolt. So those are the two primary ammunitions we've been using. Let's see, I'm going to take a look down this tube here. Let's see if I can get it to focus on the threads there. You can see there's a lot of gunk in the threads. Uh, definitely need to clean those out pretty extensively before putting this back together. But the tube itself, uh, you're not going to really be able to see it too well. But the tube itself, you know, from my perspective, has been cleaned for the most part. You know, there's still some carbon fouling on the, on the ends of it. Uh, around the inside, but uh, for the most part the carbon has been scraped off as the baffles were pushed out All right So just gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna even scrub these baffles at all We're just gonna take the ultrasonic cleaner here We're going to set these baffles up on the tray we're gonna get a 50 50 mixture of purple power and water and then we're going to let this thing run. Now this Harbor Freight ultrasonic cleaner is a little bit of a pain as you can only do 480 second cycles maximum. Uh, and after running it for 15 to 20 minutes, you're supposed to let it cool off. It does have a heated cycle, however. Uh, so while these are running in the ultrasonic cleaner, and I'll show you after each 480 second cycle, I'm gonna work on cleaning this end cap and uh, we're just going to use some seal one and some elbow grease, uh, probably a toothbrush and um, maybe some cotton ear, ear cleaners. And as far as the tube is concerned, we'll just use some ear cleaners to clean those threads uh, and clean the back threads. But the back threads are pretty darn clean, so there shouldn't be much involved in that. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to stop the video, get this uh, stuff running, and I'll see you back. Uh, to work on this end cap and then uh, to check on the baffles. Alright guys, we're back. I'm um, just going to work on cleaning this part of the end cap. You can see uh, that hopefully we can get it to focus. There's quite a bit of gunk on there. Those holes are pretty much filled in some of them with gunk. Now does it really matter? Probably not, uh, but I like things being pretty clean. Uh, as far as the tube's concerned, like I said, we're just going to clean off the uh, threads a little bit and I may run a rag down through there as best as I can uh, but just pushing the baffles out really cleans that all right so let's kind of get things soaking with a little CLP CL1 I didn't intend for that to come out of my finger but because it did we won't waste it grab a rag and just wipe off some of the filth that comes right off while I'm doing that, I'm just going to talk for a minute. The reason you don't want to put the tube itself in the ultrasonic cleaner is the finish that AAC uses is not the greatest, I will have to admit. Uh, and any kind of finish really that's black could just come right off these suppressors in an ultrasonic cleaner. Now, just rubbing this rag through really made a big difference on those threads. Use my finger just to squirt a little bit of this in there. Kind of just get it soaking so that anything left comes right off. But just running the rag through really made that big difference. I'm going to take a Q-tip and just take whatever will come right off. Same with the end cap. You know, you don't want this black finish coming off unless you don't care. Some people don't. Spread that around. Make sure we get down in those holes. I'm going to have this thing looking pretty much new once we're done with it. Right. 
just gonna let that stuff sit, let that carbon soak for a few minutes, um, and then we will wipe some of it off with a rag and go at it with Q-tips and a toothbrush. All right, here we have the baffles after the first go round with the ultrasonic cleaner. So let's take a look at them. Try and get the focus here. These are unshielded chaos. You can see the ultrasonic cleaner really did a nice job uh, on those sides. Even on the top, there's still a little bit of stuff left there. But for the most part, right there, one run already has us looking pretty good. There's a good bit still in the conical section. Um, but this, again, was only one run for 480 seconds. The blast baffle. Looking already significantly better. All right. So we're going to put these back in, uh, let them run again, and then we'll get back to the end cap. All right, so we're back to the tube and end cap. Got us a clean paper towel, get rid of all that lead and carbon dust. So I'm just going to take a Q-tip and go over these threads. They're already looking really good. And you can see not a whole lot of stuff coming off, just the threads. Let's do the uh, tube. Just shove some rag down in there till it seems pretty full and then pull it out. The tube, like I said, most of it gets clean taking the baffles out. Got that rag pretty much all the way through. Get a few turns. It's in there pretty snug. And pull it out. And the rag comes out pretty clean. No dirtier than it already was. And the tube itself looks really clean now. So we're just going to continue with the threads here. I'm going to spare you guys that. I'm just going to go over them a few more times, make sure I hit these back threads, which were already pretty clean, and then we'll call that tube complete. For the most part, it already is. I'll probably spend about 30, 40 more seconds on it. So let's work on this end cap here. Take my toothbrush and just scrub at it a little bit. Just a little dental pick in these holes. Those holes, I like to stick the back of the Q-tip in, too. Like, you break the Q-tip in half, show that, and that works really well. They're making progress. And I don't think it really even matters if you clean these holes out. I'm just one of those people that like things to be spotless. Definitely gonna need a little more of that CLP cleaner on here. Uh, but we are making progress. So I'll spare you guys the rest of this, but what I'm just gonna do is continue just scraping at that uh, carbon and lead build up there with the Q-tips and uh, the back of this toothbrush. And we'll put a little bit of more of the CLP stuff on it here and there. I also just run a Q-tip through the center. Mm, nothing crazy. All right, so this is after uh, the second 480 second uh, run through the ultrasonic cleaner with heat. And we're a total of 16 minutes in there. Uh, you can see these things are looking pretty darn good. Use my other hand so we'll focus. I mean, that is looking pretty spotless. The top still, so I mean, there's still some areas that have uh, some, some gunk that needs to kind of fall off, but that's very representative of all the baffles here. Now the blast baffle, it's looking pretty good. Some of this black I don't think will ever get off. I haven't been able to since the original uh, blast.
but significantly cleaner. So we're going to run these through the ultrasonic cleaner. All right, so this is after the third 480 second cycle, so we're at a total of uh, 24 minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner. So here's the blast baffle. You can see that the cone is completely clean. A couple spots on the outside. And I'm sorry, my dog's making a bunch of noise. Uh, and still the little blast face is a little bit dirty, so we're gonna keep running these. Um, the rest of them all pretty similar. The cone, the cup, all pretty much spotless. Uh, and then the blast faces still are a little bit clogged up with stuff. So we're going to run them all uh, for another few cy cycle or two. Again, we'll keep showing you uh, as we go. All right, so here we are. This is after four cycles in the ultronic cleaner, total of 32 minutes. Uh, this is one cup. Cups are, you know, the faces are starting to get cleaner. Pretty much spotless everywhere else. Here's one of the dirtiest ones. Cup's still pretty dirty. But everything else is pretty much spotless. Cleanest, one of the cleaner ones. That one's just about done. Uh, if they all looked like this, I'd probably stop here, but because a couple of them still are pretty dirty, we're gonna do a couple more runs. This blast baffle I'm happy with. Now, I don't expect it to be perfect. There's still going to be some burn powder marks, but they look significantly better than what we started with. All right, so here's 40 minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner. That was our fifth cycle of 480 seconds. So we've got four that are clean enough that I would be happy putting those back in the suppressor. Uh, Three more that just need a little bit more time. If we get to focus. The blast baffle, still pretty dirty in there, so. All right, so we are now at 48 minutes in. This is our sixth cycle. Again, we're pretty much clean with all of the secondary baffles. There's a tiny little bit left on some of them. Still, this one you can see just a little bit in that corner. Hopefully that'll come off in the next cycle or so. Uh, and the blast baffle was oh, pretty much spotless, uh, except for this area, which seems to be the most difficult area for by hand to get A, and seems to be it's also a little bit difficult on these ultrasonic cleaners, but they're definitely getting better each cycle. So uh, we're gonna keep going and we'll see you back. Here we are, seven cycles in. This is a total of 56 minutes. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way they are now. Uh, you're never gonna get them probably perfectly clean unless I do the, keep doing this for several hours. Uh, but I'd be happy with this under normal circumstances, but for the sake of the video, you know, this is pretty darn clean. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna go one, maybe two more cycles for just over an hour of cleaning. Uh, but overall, these are looking really good. So, um, you know, about an hour in the ultrasonic cleaner seems to be the ticket. I do have it on the heated mode. So, guys, we'll see you after the next cycle and consider doing one more after that. And then we'll call it quits, put this thing back together. All right. So, uh, unfortunately, that cycle didn't complete. Uh, it only ran for five minutes. The ultrasonic cleaner sh shut itself off. Um, when you run it for too long in the heated section it will shut off to prevent the thing the device from overheating so um, you know this did go for five minutes which gives us a total of 56 plus five an hour and one minutes uh, and these things are pretty much done I'd put them back together I'm gonna wait till it cools off and run them through one more time just so they're spotless all right so the baffles are done in the ultrasonic cleaner they were in for a total of nine cycles. However, one of the cycles didn't complete and went uh, only for three min for five minutes. So we have a total of an hour and I believe nine minutes total. So what I'm doing now is I've already got these out of the ultrasonic cleaner. They're drying and um, I have them 
kind of coated in some CL1, uh, CLP plus cleaner lubricant and protectant, and just the baffles, the end cap, uh, and so, and I put some of that on the uh, threads as well to the tube. I'm gonna let that soak in for a half an hour, maybe an hour, just whenever I get back to it. Uh, and when I come back to that, I'll show you guys how to assemble these, uh, put it back into the stack, and we'll be all done. All right, so we got everything cleaned up here. The baffles were in the ultrasonic cleaner for a total of 109 minutes. Um, for the most part, they are spotless. There's a few little areas where maybe a tiny little speck of carbon or lead is still on the baffles. Um, and I could have got that off the little elbow grease or kept them in the ultrasonic cleaner longer. Uh, but I'm very happy with how they turned out. Now, um, I did then use the CLP, uh, CL1 cleaner lubricant and reconditioned the metal so that they could soak up some of that oil that had been stripped in the cleaning process. And then I wiped off the excess. So now we're gonna show you guys how to reassemble this. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna play a little game of Jenga and stack these up. You're gonna start um, with the non-blast baffle. The blast baffle will be the, the last one to go in the stack. And you're going to put these cone down and you want to alternate that little cutout right on this side. Take your time so as not to knock them over. And last one, the blast baffle. All right, double check and make sure they're alternating, which they are. Then you're gonna take your tube and you're gonna slide it down very gently so as not to knock them over. There they go. Use your finger to keep them in. All right, and I like to also line up the uh, little cutout in the bottom of this cone uh, with my serial number, and that way I don't have as much point of impact shift when I take this thing apart. So I'm just gonna do that. Go ahead and take our final end cap. Careful not to cross thread it. I did lubricate all of the threads, tighten that up, just snug it up, nothing crazy. All right, and there it is, got the end cap tightened up and she's all done. So that's all there is to it, you know, uh, no real elbow grease involved, uh, the hardest part that is most time consuming for me is cleaning the end cap. Uh, but other than that, it's really easy. So don't be afraid to get a baffle stack that is not shielded. Uh, if you use the appropriate pusher tool, it's very easy still to get the baffles out. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps someone. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe.